The objective today is to explain what the Intel manual says about SIMD streaming extensions 4.2. There are five of these instructions that operate on XMM registers as a source or destination. So first question, which registers do SSE 4.2 operate on? Now these include four text string processing instructions and one packed keyword compare. Programming these five instructions is similar to programming a 128-bit integer SIMD in SSE2 or 3, or the supplemental version of SS3, that is. 4.2 does not provide any 64-bit integer SIMD instructions. So another softball question, what type of instructions will SSE 4.2 not provide for? And those are 64-bit integer ones specifically SIMD type ones. Now CRC32 operates on general purpose registers and is summarized in section 516, the sections that follow summarize each subgroup. So here are those uh, sections, first string and text processing instructions. First we'll have a packed compare explicit length strings and return index in ECX or RCX. Same exact thing, but you'll return a mask in XMM0. Now we go from explicit to implicit length strings and return it in the in, and return the index in ECX or RCX. And going along the same lines, implicit length strings will return mask in the XMM0. So those are the four string and text processing instructions down here. We got packed compare SIMD integer instruction. So this performs a logical compare of greater than one or greater than unpacked integer quad words. So there's the greater than sign. This part is particularly interesting because it's all about AES encryption, but uh, it says AES, NI, and PCL, MUL, QDQ. I don't think I've ever seen a section where the name of an instruction is in the section title. So that right there is this right down here. Let's read six AESNI instructions operate on XMM registers to provide accelerated primitives for block encryption and decryption using advanced encryption standard FIPS 197 and then the perform carryless multiplication of two 64-bit numbers instruction performs a carryless multiplication for two binary numbers up to 64-bit wide. Strange, that exact wording is just kind of flipped and written down here like that. Well, AES DAC will stand for decryption, and this will perform an AES decryption round using 128 bit state and round key. You can perform the last AES decryption round using the same thing. You can perform an AES encryption round using 128 state and round key. That is strange. These two should actually be uh, ahead of decrypt, I imagine. I guess it just doesn't matter. Down here we have AESIMC, as in perform an inverse mix column transformation primitive. So there's the question, what is an inverse mix column transformation primitive? No idea. And here is our first 15 letter, 15 byte instruction. And it's almost just the exact words. It says AES key gen assist. This assists the creation of round keys with a key expansion schedule. So yeah, this will be a really short video. I do have something supplementary I'll throw up real quick, but um, next time we'll go ahead and go into uh, Intel AVX. I wanted to keep that for a separate video. But we can add some more questions by going to this search I did. If we go to the Intel Developer Zone, somebody asked an interesting question I thought we should read together to better understand SSE 4.2. I guess I could have took the AES route, but there will be plenty of videos from me on that topic at a later time, and there are actually quite a few videos from me describing quite a bit about just public key cryptography. But let's focus right here on this 4.2 stuff. Someone named Westmere asks, if I have an existing C++, C++ source code, do I need to modify the code before compiling with an appropriate compiler to get the benefits of these instructions? Or will the new compilers auto-magically, that's kind of funny, use these instructions for string comparisons? So they got it right, they know what SSE 4.2 is dealing with, string and text processing. But the use of the word compiler so broadly is kind of strange to me. Each compiler 
has their own team of engineers working on each of those versions and there's no telling um, what each version will include as Intel comes out with its new instructions. So if we're on this developer zone, maybe they should have specified what compiler they're thinking about specifically. Unless they're just very anxious to get those uh, benefits from the SSE 4.2 instructions. Well, I do like Tim's response, and apparently he's a black belt. Current Intel and Sun compilers have an explicit compile option for 4.2, but Tim hasn't seen a case to show that code such as in this example, might be generated by auto-vectorization without explicitly writing the SSE 4.2 intrinsics into the code. This requires a compiler with the up-to-date include file, and for Linux, we're talking about bin utils 2.9. There's no current mechanism to take advantage of the instructions without recompilation. Recom okay, that's just very obvious, although there appear to be several research projects on binary translation. Existing code which uses parallel move instructions, for example, automatically takes advantages of the improved support of varying alignments. So the question is, how can one take advantage of the new addition to the SSE4 extension? And the answer is using the intrinsics in the code. He says so right there. So you use those intrinsics, you recompile, and you should be good. Now let me read what this person says, though, because it says Intel in parentheses. Maybe that means they are... Um, certifiably from Intel, where they go ahead and copy the original question and then write down here, many string functions in the runtime library can be sped up using SSE 4.2 instructions, and some of them can also be sped up using existing SSE 2 as well. Various compilers are exploring the possibility of drop-in replacement of runtime library functions using newer instruction sets. I would keep my fingers crossed that it will happen in the near future. So I ask, what does a drop-in replacement of a runtime library function look like? Would that mean what I had just said is inaccurate? That there's no getting around recompiling? Now I sort of ask that question genuinely, but I do think I know the answer. I'll let you go ahead and research though. Let's get one more and then we'll be done with this video. But that same person we just finished reading wrote, um, you might want to check out the alpha code of glibc 2.11 string and memory functions. It includes multi-architecture, right? Arch, uh, multi-architecture support so that the library can be configured and built to recognize what ISA is available in your existing code calling string and memory functions of glib. Uh, will execute using SIMD code of Neolim, Penryn, Merom based processors. So the question is, where does Quo suggest a person look to learn more about configuring a library to recognize types of processors? And I think that's worth your time, because once it recognizes what processor the code is working on, it can optimize by using that processor's um, capabilities, such as if it is capable of dealing with SSE 4.2 instructions. So like I'm saying here, um, this is all about optimization. Uh, one such example, Quo says, is in the latest optimization uh, manual. And uh, someday I hope I get to read this with you guys. Though that link is broken. I know it exists though, because I've been to that optimization manual before. But anyways, thank you for watching. Next time we'll be going into advanced vector extensions, which is a really fun lesson.